Testosterone is a very dirty compound, so it's going to bind anywhere. It's not remotely selective like SARMs or Trend. What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Please follow my Instagram at Russo Lifts just in case something happens to this YouTube channel. You can follow, message, and you can watch my daily story content on Instagram. I'll see you there. What is up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. ASMR SIP 1907 coupon code Russo. Just a quick little sip. I'm about to head to the gym, so Got to put on the quick little ASMR spritz, Intelligent Elephant Carbon. Check out Derek's cologne, coupon code Russo, IntelligentElephant.com. And I am making my pre-workout with some Vitamin Water Zero, no sponsor. Don't get this flavor, get the pink looking one of the Zero. This tastes like crap, the pink one is good. We got some Gorilla Mode on deck. I'm training chest. Leave a thumbs up if you want to see the in-gym footage. It is coming after my vacation. I'm going to the beach for a week and then it's full kill mode. My other editor will be in that seat when I am back and I am hyped to get this channel full steam ahead. But I am making a pre-workout to sip on this entire video. So I'm gonna, I'll do a scoop and like a little bit more. I'm trying to keep stems down my blood pressure. And then check out Puros. Puros has been one of the longest supporters of all my uncensored content. Puros, check them out. Keep on code Russo. Let's get that draw going. I used to be a country club waiter. I got this brand new table that Andrew's getting fucking mad at. Oh, I had one little spell failure. Oh, Andrew's OCD over there of this new table. And Carolyn's like, this is real wood. Make sure you, like my girl's like, this is real wood. Make sure you use a coaster. And here I am. Like the third day of owning the table, ruining it. But today I'm going to be going into real quickly and tell me if you like this shorter form content down below. I'm gonna try and keep this really simple. So I have a lot of people in my DM box who are stacking Trend, aka stronger steroids with higher binding affinities, as well as SARMs and steroids, right? People are stacking testosterone with compounds, stacking anything specifically. I'm targeting the compounds with higher binding affinities to the androgen receptors. People are wondering why when they stack a bunch of trend let, let, let's use trend because everyone hates when i talk about SARMs, even though i'm not team SARMs or team gear i use both right but let's talk about trend because everyone likes trend more anyways so when people use a high dose of trend on a high dose of test they wonder why are they so watery why am i watery I thought Trend was a hardening compound. I'm using a Gramma test and 400 Trend. Monstrous cycle, you know, a cycle that everyone says I should be running, et cetera, et cetera, if I wasn't so much about longevity and health span and was more in the game of like doing more aggressive cycles. You know, that, that is a cycle on the table that will get me tremendous aggression in the gym, tremendous results, et cetera, et cetera. The point I'm making is they come to me in the DM box at Russo Lift and they wonder why they're watery. The reason why they're watery is not because their trends fake they think the trends fake it's something else no it's not because the test is fake it's simply because the binding affinity hierarchy of the specific stack cycle you picked is causing excess water retention why russo why so your androgen receptors you only have so many as you abuse steroids for longer and longer and longer and longer periods of time you build up more androgen receptors you build up more ar more muscle nuclear you know the game. That's why Phil Heath can saturate a pro level cycle and he looks all crazy from his years of abuse, his epigenetics, his muscle nuclei, and the amount of androgen receptors in his body. So you can't just, you know, some noob, Andrew can't go copy Mr. Olympia's cycle and rapidly get there. It doesn't work like that. He doesn't have the muscle nuclei built up. He doesn't have the AR built up, etc., etc. People will go and pick a big ass cycle that their big ass friend is using from years of pyramiding up to that big cycle. They, they just try and jump the gun. And what happens is all that testosterone gets injected. You put your base of testosterone there. It occupies the AR. As you add in the higher binding affinity androgen, whether that be a SARM. SARMs are known to have extremely high binding affinities. Trend is also known to have extremely high binding affinities. And you can look up the binding affinity of any androgen compared to testosterone. If you find an NCBI article, they normally go into the binding affinity and they do the testing and everything. But once you add in the trend, the trend is going to beat the testosterone to the AR 100% of the time. So it's like a race car. 
car trends the Lambo. Testosterone's a normal sports car, like a slow, like a Camry. You know, a good car, still quick. The Lambo's always gonna win. Trend is always gonna win, buying with the AR. This causes an excess amount of free testosterone floating around. You don't want that because it's binding with the prostate, it's binding with your intestines, it's binding with all this shit you don't want it to bind with. Testosterone is a very dirty compound, so it's going to bind anywhere. It's not remotely selective like SARMs or Trend. So you're gonna have all this spillover of free testosterone. What's gonna happen next? All this free testosterone is gonna convert into dihydrotestosterone, DHT, which is what is associated with your hair falling out and androgenic acne. So you're going to cascade that side effect. I did a video a couple years ago and I'll have Andrew throw it up, how I ruined my skin. And essentially I was doing like half a gram, 600 milligrams of testosterone. I added in a bunch of S23, microwaved my skin with acne. Reason being the S23 took over all the AR androgen receptors. I was still injecting all that testosterone because I was following an old school way of doing cycles and all that was converting into estrogen and DHT. I had a watery look and I had more androgenic acne. My hair looked malnourished because all the DHT on the scalp was slowly choking out my hair follicles of nutrients, micronizing them, miniaturizing them, and making them fall out malnourished hair follicles that I'll never get back. Why was that happening? Because I was going too high with the testosterone dosage. The minute I lowered the testosterone dosage to 300, 250, a lot of those side effects went away, and I actually got the hard look that was advertised with S23. Now I get this in general in the DM box with trend cycles is because they read online they got to do a lot of tests with their trend what's happening is the trend is beating all the ar to the receptors which then causes all this free testosterone to convert into estrogen and dht what is the bigger caveat with trend is trend fucks with prolactin progesterone you're feeding the progesterone prolactin feedback loop by all this supplementation of e2 conversion of estrogen conversion from the massive amount of testosterone you're injecting alongside the trend not even mentioning the dihydrotestosterone the dht conversion so that's why prolactin based gyno forms so rapidly on these high dosage test plus trend cycles and why the skin the hair gets to garbage it's a cascading side effect basically the way i view testosterone if you want to blast fucking testosterone and do it the old school method fuck you russo sarms are brand new blah 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 test has been studied for a hundred a fucking century a hundred years you're fucking dumb i'm not Cool, you can do the testosterone. Maybe do a little bit of Anivar on top, little bit of Devol on top, and then you can pyramid up to 600 milligrams of just testosterone. The minute you add in these exotic androgens that have higher binding affinities, higher anabolic to androgenic ratios than testosterone, they are gonna have priority on your androgen receptors, which is gonna cause all this spillover, which is associated with most of the side effects. That's all I'm getting at. So if you're gonna do one of these exotic androgens on top my methodology my way of view is testosterone is homeostasis the baseline it's the baseline test the test base 165 to 250 milligrams trt if you're doing elevated bodybuilding trt aka mini blast i like 350 milligrams a week that doesn't cause much spillover with the way my body is with my ar my muscle nuclei obviously there are genetic outliers on both sides of the spectrum i'm just saying what works for me and then i add in the more anabolic or the more androgenic compound i want if i'm cutting if i'm trying to get cut up trying to bring out that dense look for the summer on stage. I'm adding in androgenic compounds if I'm cutting. If I'm bulking, if I'm trying to build muscle, I'm not adding in androgenic compounds. I'm adding in anabolic compounds, such as nandrolone phenylpropionate or certain SARMs or DECA. So if I'm cutting, I'm adding in Tren, Masteron, da 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 da. If I'm bulking, I'm adding in MPP DECA. I am only doing that on a testosterone base of, again, 165 to 350 max. That stops that binding hierarchy from getting all out of control if i did a gram 
to 1.5 grams of test and I added in any of this other shit, it would cascade all the DHT and estrogen conversions and I would have to keep up with more polypharmacy abuse by adding aromatase inhibitors or antiprolactins to keep that ridiculous conversion under control as much as I can and mitigate it. When in reality, I would rather see you keep test as the base or use test solo. That's what I'm trying to get at and get across in layman's terms. It's very hard for people to understand that testosterone, if you start stacking it with shit, it is like low down on that hierarchy of binding affinity aka beating other compounds to the receptors. And the same thing goes when you stack RAD and LGD. They're competing like this. You might have enough AR to saturate it all. I don't know if you do or not. All I'm saying is I would pick one or the other. You know what side effect is causing what, and then you scale one single individual one after you understand how that impacts your body versus stacking force arms together, or multiple steroids together. That doesn't make sense to me personally. And I understand it's done in the upper echelons of bodybuilding, but most of them have been cycling for so long that they need that amount of drugs to get the same effect from their elongated abuse. Don't be comparing yourself at square like three when they're at square 80 and they have different goals than you and they are sacrificing their health more than you you need to realize that there's a health span biohacking way to do enhanced pharmacology biohacking bodybuilding whatever the fuck where you know you're not trying to get to the top of the pyramid in the actual competitive physique industry of maintaining a super physiological physique that's not maintainable basically forever and you can peak it like a race car and then you either got to take the big turbos off you got to downsize or it blows up you know, it's like tuning a fucking car. Or you can take the elongated stage one approach, stage two approach, it pretty much lasts the same lifespan. If all the ancillary modifications are done and everything's kept under control and you don't chase tons of power, tons of boost. That's a way to relate it. Don't get it twisted. You don't need a gram of test and to stack shit on top. If you wanna do that, just do the test solo and don't add in all these higher binding affinity compounds to fuck up just doing a solo blast of test. Just some food for thought. I'll see you in my next video.